you know, black folks, and basically we're at DA 14, it's the most thing that we're supposed to be concerned about, and basically when we do cross over here, you should be able to see, if you always watch on full screen, eventually in February 13th through the 16th with DA 14. Now, when I go down here and we get the uh, condition 4, which is goofier than hell that they do that, because... <coughs> You have to admit that basically the government is doing a major lie here because this is the closest thing we know of ever coming around Earth. Now, 9 is supposed to be the most dangerous, okay? Then the, the other comment here a while back that the I showed you the information on what we figured to be, I think it's X4 or whatever, it would be 2012 X4, whatever we, whatever we believed it to be, the comment, and it's very heavy that that probably is that comment. That have been showing you the footage. We get the. You always want to go to the minimum AU back in 1918, and then I'm going to end up trying to see too real fast. It just it takes a long time to. Uh, you're better off to do when I'm searching the data, and I started looking at the data. The closest to Earth, basically looks like we were back on that minimum distance back in 1918. Okay, 419 because they can f the nodes and everything like that. So basically, this has been something. This object has been watched for a long time known to astronomers, okay? Now, the very most interesting thing is, I started looking, okay, how many times, how often does it orbit Earth? Okay, it's over, it basically, you just go to the, to this up here, and you can play this through, okay? I ain't got time to screw around that right now. I will actually put it in play, and then kind of get an idea, okay? I'll send it backwards, and I'll send it forward in time, okay? But as you can see, the orbit there of it, it's about the size of the orbit of Earth, around the sun, okay? It's just in a different, as you see, trajectory, okay? Now, I know it gets real boring here in this stuff here. That's why I make the, I thought I'd put this information real fast, but I'm going to show you some actual factual. Everybody likes pictures, short attention span theater, okay? But as you see, the years and times, and it comes close to the Earth and the moon, okay? And then it spreads out, and I was looking at, okay, well, how often, okay, 1918, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, okay, and then there's just all this break-off on information. Is this an object that NASA and a bunch of astronomers, somebody, some astronomer died and forgot to keep track of, uh, basically, data? Because we go all the way to 1996, and then it appears again, okay? And then they start keeping track again of how far away and stuff like that. So basically, in time, an astronomer died or something to get this information because they don't have the close approach data from all this time, from 26 to 96. Okay, so this is something that somebody deep, darkly, and then we wonder about what we've heard for stories of astronomers being, you know, anyway, passed away lately, you know, so forth and so on. So everybody's, uh, they, it's the fear police, and they fearful of markets and control and everything like that. So no matter what, you get down to the actual factual, uh, your life depends on it, that basically, that's as many O's as close as we ever have had. And you can see it going all the way up through, this is the data row that you keep an eye on, whether I go out to this stuff, closest to Earth, and I'm telling you, that's 16,854 miles, is what that comes out to, because this is all you. And as you see, when we scroll up, the minimum all you will get to it. So the dates and times and everything like that. So basically, this was something that was put on the back burner for a long time on information, as you can see, from 1926 to 1996. Basically, something in the dirty 30s, somewhere some powerful person got a hold of this information, and now NASA has it now, and started watching it again in 1996. Okay, and then we have this close approach coming from February the 13th through the 16th, and it came close back in February 17th, the last time somebody had observations of it. But as you can see on the Earth node, the idea that how f that was a lot farther away than our 16,000. So this is going to be the closest we know to people alive and knowing and knowledgeable about this item. Okay, So DA-14 is very important, because you see we come all the way down to this AU, and that comes out to 16,854 miles right there. 0 0.0001, and you watch these O's as I go up through this data, and that'll be the closest object. So basically, s people of knowledge have kept this hidden from a long time, and somehow someone...
pulled it out of the archives, okay, in 96, okay, so, because if we start looking up, this is scientific data that's kept and wrote down, so if we start looking it up, anybody's going to tell us anything when they first found it, so no matter what, this object's coming around, now we want to get the size of the darn thing, okay, Short attention spans either people like pictures, okay? So basically, we're going to play the player here, and we can move this node along. And basically, we've, we believe, I believe, that we have found the wave, okay? This is the wave of, and you very. this is very important for us to blow this up and get up and high and shot on size on this, okay? Because this looks like the energy wave that we've seen coming into the right-hand corner of Sechi, okay? It's going to take a while to get Sechi back. But we got this compressed shot of the 15th, okay? This looks like right here, my pointer will work here. There's also this object here, and you know it is where it's at, and we're going to be able to show how close it is, because this wave, whether it's the wave that was out by in front of the sun, and then the sun's over here doing its, and, and this is a combination of that energy wave and the sun's CME action, and these objects are here, because you're going to see the wave go behind these two objects here which are closer to and this is basically mercury should pretty much be this okay and it's mercury's along this magnetical somewhere if i'm wrong it could be any one of these and there could be other objects on mercury's magnetical because mercury's just like the moon the same size as the moon okay and venus is right here it's close to the camera it gets blown up real big okay people are saying false comments on my comments area so then i know that i'm getting warm okay Okay, now when I blow up, I can't point where the crap, but I can kind of point with the handle on the deal. And basically that object there that's between the two magneticals, which pretty damn heavily sure, if I can get the handle, that should be Mercury right there. Same size as the moon. Okay, you can see Venus. Venus is the biggest thing, and I got this one over here, and basically that's Venus, the biggest dragon thing. Between those two magnetical lines is what I've pointed the handle to if I can get it to there again. No matter what, that's not the comet, Okay. Because why? Because it's still stationary there, and we've seen from the Sechi footage that the comet moved real fast. So no matter what, we're now that I have the brown handle, that is not, and it's got a just like Venus, it's got so that object's out there, no matter what the hell it is, whether it's ice on or whether it's another, and it really doesn't look to be a planet because it doesn't have a magnetical. So we do have an object moving in, and basically I'm going to go down smaller where I can point and play the video, and you're going to see what I'm concerned about is the idea that there is these three nodes right there along with this object here okay and I've been noticing at Navy which is heavily military controlled the idea they've been wanting to look besides just believing what astronomers tell them okay and they've been looking at a lot of triangulated objects okay and there are a lot of triangulated objects by the Sun now remember the Sun is over here doing the CME action we believe, I believe this to be that energy wave that we've seen coming in on Sechi, okay? This here arc right here of the dark and, the, and there is an object right here which is huge, okay? So we got to start keeping an eye on this object also that's very low. Now remember, no matter what, Mercury's along this line right here, no matter where, if when I'm pointing I'm wrong and everything like that. So we're going to blow back up into this, but let's play this real fast because basically I screwed up before because I forgot, I didn't realize, I wasn't used to playing this player. You see what they're blocking? You can play this along and get frozen shots, okay? So they're freezing up there. What they were trying to freeze up there, I'm not really sure. Maybe there was enough CME action that they weren't getting a shot. It doesn't matter. So then maybe we need to be concerned about all this stuff that's up here, okay? All this dark stuff, we're keeping an eye on it. It doesn't matter. We're keeping an eye on We're observing. We're observers, eyes eyes on the sky so all that stuff's up there so if we go back in with the magnifier we want to take a look at this object down here because as you can see and then if you play back what I just motioned forward on the movie and then I'll hit the motion player because no matter what see this is in front of this wave and closer to and actually I'm forgetting about my pointer not working with the crap so basically here I'll just zoom in a little bit more and there's another object right there that we're worried about down there. That's a dark object between the two magnetical lines. Okay? You got Venus. Okay, up there. And then we got a dark object down below between the magnetical of Mercury and there. Okay, you can see the black blotch. Okay? And the triangulation, there's also this black blotch here, this black blotch here, this black blotch here. Okay? So blotch, blotch, blotch. And then basically we hit 
play and see it'll make it move real fast and then you'll get a movie presentation but as you can see that this stuff's coming off now this might be actually the bait large filament that came off of the sun could possibly be and it could just be all CME but we've seen that energy wave coming across so was this with the energy wave or was it off the sun okay now most importantly this dark stuff up top as you can see this move so this could be the CME just this here black blotch but no matter what this stuff is staying here these three big black nodes as I play the movie okay just keep concentrating on there and then how are they blocking so they're trying to obscure the view either that or we're just getting bad because the CME getting bad not getting the data okay because that plays it like a movie so we broke this down okay very interesting stuff as you can see right there on the bottom you see what I'm saying this huge stuff moving through space there so yeah that's huge and don't that's why forget about the X class and C class flare it's electrical energy the size of the stuff that's coming off the Sun that's what's interesting there if it's coming off the Sun or is it that flipping big old wave of energy that we've seen coming off Sechi. Now let's see if I can get new fresh Sechi yet. Either that or be later in the day. Okay, we're at B, maximized up. No matter, we want to pay attention to where I have the handle, the brown handle, and pointed, okay? No matter what, that magnetical line in that area, that could either be, they're blowing up big time from behind. Remember, this is B. I'm not at Ace, okay? So it's so far away that the only thing that really should be close would be Mars. And we're not, I really don't think we have Mars anywhere in this. No, you watch the magnetical where basically I can point with the handle where that grayish area is there on that magnetical line, okay? Then there's going to be another magnetical line to the left, okay? And basically that's where we end up seeing, as you can see through the gray, you can see the haze of the magnetical as we go up and you can see the light white. Okay, there's going to be a blackness that'll come to the right of that. Now remember, the sun should be over here to the right, and it basically, as you see the whiteness and then the black side of the magnetical line, then you do know that the sun is over here on the right-hand side. Okay, so basically, what's amazing is along this magnetical, look at all the large whatever the heck out there. Okay, because because you can see, and also in between, you can see also if I can get the handle to work just right. You can also see, now this could be hella far off, millions of miles, uh, quantum leaps out there that we're seeing with when you take a shot from Soho, okay? So, not really concerned that much with that, but everything along the magnetical line here. As you can see, up and down this magnetical line, like I said, we're on behind. So when they zoom in, basically the closest things would be Jupiter, Mercury, and or, and they're shooting all the way across, so they have to zoom in big time, because otherwise, really... Mercury and Venus should be just a faintness, okay? So no matter what, low here, we have th that stuff, okay? And that kind of matches up with what you see over on A. And now we need to do is make you watch when we play the smaller player of this whiteness to the left, you're going to end up seeing some blackness. Uh, if I can get the handle over here of my pointer, there's going to be some blackness that lines up right along here, okay? Of whatever object that is. Maybe it's Mercury, it doesn't matter, but it's you got to remember, this is all the way from over at B. Okay. I try to point with the wood handle when I go to magnifier, but I can point real good here. But you see, this is the the blackness is what I'm wondering, because basically the sun's over here. Now, this is how, when I was zoomed in, that's what NASA uses to see what's closest to the sun. Because it's always going to have a white side towards the sun, as these objects down here did that I had blown up, you see. And there's a ton of stuff along this magnetical line. And a dark side, and then a white side, so then when it's, they can tell where it's at distance wise out from the sun and from whatever planet they're zoomed in on so on this one you have to get interested about what are they what did they actually zoom in on from stereo behind i'm thinking that this was earth here and this was jupiter here and that was basically just earth shadow right there okay which would be also the moon in this that should be the earth and the moon and basically jupiter is somewhere along this so either flip this upside down and this is Jupiter down here or here because what's nice about Jupiter is the biggest damn thing we have out there but then what's interesting is this stuff here that's also here too so it's a great way to be able to look basically helping you keys of looking at these stereo pictures see yesterday they didn't give us a movie from ahead okay they only had the behind one okay and then we come up here and basically remember you can always flip it upside down because this should be Venus Okay, and this should be Mercury. Okay, and then you can go from the starlight, the sunlight, that 
and that should that is Venus, okay, and that is the comet's tail 